This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hello my lovely ravens, my name is Chantelle and welcome to another video. Today I'm creating the 20th Harry Potter Matchbox diorama for you. If you would like to catch up on all the other ones, I will leave a link in the iCard section. So let's see what the 20th Harry Potter Matchbox diorama will be. So the little scrolls, let's mix them up. And it will be the Shrieking Shack. So let's start. As with the previous matchboxes in the series, I create these myself using a template. There is a link in the description box below along with the measurements that I use. If you would like to know what kind of materials I use, there is an Amazon store link in the description box as well, which will take you to many useful lists if you would like to purchase any materials. As you can see, I'm first creating the roof of the Shirking Shack. The building is quite tall, but not as wonky as you might think. The glue that I'm using here is wood glue. The Shirking Shack was only used so that Remus Lupin would have a place for his monthly transformations into a werewolf in secret and safety during the time he was a student attending Hogwarts. The yells and shouts heard by villagers were really Lupin biting and scratching himself due to lack of humans to infect. The shack actually has no working doors or windows that allow entry or exit of the premises. The entrance is through a tunnel under the Whomping Willow on the Hogwarts school grounds. This allowed Remus Lupin and James Potter, Peter Pettigrew and Sirius Black to pass between the two locations unnoticed as any Maggie or Werewolf. I've glued the matchbox together and will now continue working on the roof part by closing the sides of the pointy roof. I'm simply placing a piece of cardboard against it and trace around. Because the Shrieking Shack has a stepped gable, I'm going to create that design before cutting it out. And once I'm happy with that, I'm going to cut this out with an X-Acto knife and glue them on the sides of the roof. In 1994, Harry Potter and Hermione Granger were let into the shack when Sirius Black, as a dog, dragged Ron off into the underground passage. While inside the shack, Harry then found out who had really betrayed his parents and Scabbers' true identity was revealed. During the confrontation, Remus Lupin and Severus Snape also entered the shack. Remus entered to assist his friend in exposing the true betrayer and Snape attempted to capture Sirius. Now that the roof is on, I'm closing the slipcase for the matchbox. I want to create the exterior for the Shrieking Shack, including the window at the top of the building, which is half part of the roof and half part of the front of the Shrieking Shack. I drew on the matchbox where the windows need to be and then start cutting out the parts I will need to build the window with. And once they're all cut, I can glue them on with wood glue. And let me tell you, tweezers are your best friend here. Here is a little description of the Shrieking Shack from the books. It was a room, a very disordered, dusty room. Paper was peeling from the walls, there were stains all over the floor. Every piece of furniture was broken, as though someone has smashed it. The windows were all boarded up. In the foyer, a staircase led to a second floor. In one of the rooms, there is a magnificent but dusty four poster bed with rickety doors and in the film adaptions the walls are shown to slightly move. This room is also where Peter Pettigrew was caught. The Shrieking Shack was also used by Lord Voldemort and several of his Death Eaters in 1998 as a hideout during the Battle of Hogwarts. Severus Snape was killed by Nagini in this very building while Harry, Hermione and Ron watched helplessly from their hiding spot. In the movie, Snape was killed by Voldemort and Nagini at the Boathouse, an underground harbour at Hogwarts, though in the movie it was an exterior building, 
According to Andrew Auckland Snow, art director of the Harry Potter series, the setting was changed to give the scene a more dramatic atmosphere and take it out of an interior that was already known by viewers and the change was approved by Rowling. Fans were understandably disappointed that Snape's death didn't take place at the Shrieking Shack as it took away some interesting foreshadowing. Now that I'm done with building the main front window, I'm going to add some shutters. This is simply done by adding two pieces of cardstock against the built window. Once I've cut it where the split is between the roof and the lower part of the matchbox, I'm gluing them into place. This is what we have so far. And with all the other bits and pieces of windows attached as well. And the back is basically a larger version of the window that's at the front, just not split in half. From some cardboard, I made these little stairs that go onto the front door that actually is not the front door, as I just told you. And then I'm going to build up that front door basically the same way as I did the windows. A few of you have asked me, where do you keep these and where do you keep Dumbledore's office? All my creations are currently in our library room. In the coming few weeks, we are changing up the setup in the craft room, which I will film and if you are interested, we'll post it here on this channel as an extra video. In that video, I will then also show you where all the miniatures live. I am now adding all the details to the building, so the side panels, uh, there's one panel on each side and you just saw me finish the front door, cutting off those panels and I think this is it for the exterior. Before we move on to the interior of the building, let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity. It is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. There are so many subjects to choose from, from watercolors and graphic design to polymer clay and crochet. Even music, film and photography have a wide range of courses available. I have recently come across a class by Gabrielle Bricky, a wonderful artist. In this class she walks you through where she gets her inspiration from and how you can create inspiration boards and streamline your artistic process. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Let's get back to the video. As I mentioned before, there are stairs in this building. In the movie, you can see Harry and Hermione come out of a trap door in the floor and walk up to the room where they will meet Sirius Black for the very first time. So this is me creating the stairs. This is always a tedious process, but I actually enjoy making them because it's very, very rewarding. Of course, the stairs have handrails as well, which I am drawing out here and then cutting them out with an X-Acto knife. And then, of course, I need to glue them against the stairs themselves. And then I'm going to glue the staircases into the building. The Shrieking Shack is shown more as a large two-story house rather than a shack in the film adaptations. The shack interior in the film adaptations were also very different from the books. These are the doors that lead into the room. I've cut out the door shapes and giving them more detail by gluing smaller rectangles on top. In the movie there is also an old piano in the room and that is what I'm creating here.
For the legs of the piano, I'm using pieces of toothpick. For the four poster bed, I've cut out a rectangle and now I'm cutting out the corners with a hole punch so I can slot the posters in the crevices. And finally, onto the painting of everything. I'm starting off with the bed. And then the floor that still needs to be glued into place, but it's easier when the entire interior is painted first. Dumbledore likely enchanted the shack structure to be abnormally durable and possibly added enchantments to make it impossible for Lupin to exit during his transformations. And this is what it looks like with just the brown base coat on. Of course, the piano needs to be painted black and then I can move on to the dry brushing which will bring out all the details and age it up. Once that's all dry, I can glue the floor in place. black square which I am painting on the floor here will be the trap door Harry and Hermione come through. And then it's time to glue everything in place. First the doors. And the latch of the trap door. Aging up the piano before it goes in. And of course adding the piano keys as well. The four poster bed still needs some cloth and I'm using see-through black organza ribbon for this. I am attaching it with Fabri-Tac glue. I'm placing some extra pieces of cardboard to the walls to make it look more worn. And then finally for the interior putting all the furniture pieces into place. The outside needs some aging up as well. I'm dry brushing on some off-white paint to most parts of the building. Then for a finishing touch I'm going to apply some modeling paste to the roof of the building. In the third movie, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, we mainly see this building covered in snow. So that is what I'm doing here and I'm covering the modeling paste with very fine white sand. Now let's have a look what this final Matchbox diorama looks like. And this is it for the 20th Harry Potter Matchbox diorama. The Shrieking Shack is definitely different from all the other Matchboxes, but it was definitely fun to make. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Please check out my other social media in the description box below. And if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget you can hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And of course, become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.